It's wonderful to hear the message of the Christmas season and the Advent season in so many different ways. I feel really connected to St. Paul's. So I've gotten to know Laura Fry over the last uh, six months or so as she has started a journey at Moravian Seminary. And of course, I've known Alan and the classes that he took there. More especially, uh, I know of the hospitality and the guidance that you provided to, to Deb Taylor, and, and uh, uh, was always very appreciative of that, and of course to, to Pastor John as well. Uh, he provided important insight, but he always did it in a kind of lighthearted way, um, and I always enjoyed talking with John about a whole variety of different things. So I feel connected to this place. I want to talk this morning about, about gift giving. And more particularly, I want to talk about how often people give us gifts in hope of shaping us into something because of that gift. But first, let's pray. Father, well, gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day, for the life and breath that you give to us. May your Holy Spirit guide these words. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. So what do you hope to receive for Christmas? What gift would you like? Or as the song goes, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. <laughs> we think such wishes are only for children, but there are plenty of us adults who have Christmas lists of our own. I don't know about you, but the problem with my list is that most of the things I want, I can't afford. And for that reason, and for others, the process of unwrapping Christmas gifts becomes a great unpredictable time. You just don't know what's in the package. There's both joy and risk in the gifts. A writer once said, a Christmas gift is somebody's theory of who you are or who they want you to become. A Christmas gift is somebody's theory of who you are or who they want you to become. What do you think about that idea? Does your Christmas gift, gift giving, reflect the idea of who the recipient is? Or more particularly, of who you wish they would be? That can be a joy-filled adventure, but remember, if you believe that, then that's also true about others gift-giving to you. What if you see yourself as this suave person with a swift intellect, and then one year, your wife, your wife, mind you, gives you a pair of singing socks and a light-up tie that says, fa la 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 That's when you go through a sort of identity crisis, isn't it? You'd like to get a gift that aims high, an iPad, a ticket to Europe, a road scholarship, but instead, here's a pair of bedroom slippers with lights on the toes so you can find your way to the bathroom in the middle of the night. And your kids say, it's a gift just for you, Dad. It's not the kind of thing an inquiring mind would want. A Christmas gift represents somebody's theory of who you are or who they would like you to become how true that can be and how unfortunate it is that we are always reading each other wrong. How many children have excitedly unwrapped a boxed set of CDs imagining it was the newest chart-topping band only to find that it was box Brandenburg concertos with some guy in a tuxedo on the front cover. And they look at their parents and say, why are you giving me this? What do you want me to be, a hopeless nerd all my life and never been invited to any parties? <laughs> Christmas is a holiday that is fraught with peril. So achingly beautiful, all the lights twinkling and the choir singing and the glorious story of the Holy Child and the shepherd's quest and Mary keeping all of these things in her mind and heart to ponder them at a later time. It's a time full of generousness and grace Fullness. But Christmas also contains the dangerous urge to improve each other, 
through our gift giving. The urge to give the family redneck, you know, a book about the history of Western civilization, or to give a Brooks Brothers ensemble to somebody who just won't get rid of their pleated pants. And while we laugh about those kind of outrageous, stranger than fiction Christmases, where we've all been the target of somebody else's gift giving, this season is in fact about a gift giver who is trying to improve us. The resolute message that we proclaim every Christmas season is a brazen and some would say preposterous claim. And rest assured, I'm the first one to embrace all sorts of interfaith and ecumenical conversations, but there is no other religion who makes the claim that we do. No Muslim or Jew or Buddhist or Hindu will affirm what we affirm at Christmas, that in Bethlehem's manger, surrounded by shepherds, the risk of all risks was undertaken. The infinite became finite. The formless took form. The word became flesh. God's great plan to alter every person in the world through a gift was set in motion. To those who believe, the new creation has already begun to take hold. This Christmas event is God's attempt to use a gift to change who you are and who I am. Will you accept the gift? Will you allow it to change your life? Will you accept it, not with some quirky smile and a thanks, like you just unwrapped a Chia pet. <laughs> God has given you an unexpected, undeserved, overwhelmingly gracious gift of love and grace and forgiveness and purpose. This is a Daddy Warbucks adopts orphan Annie kind of gift. A gift so fundamentally altering your understanding of yourself and your life purpose and your relationship with others, your call to service. This gift is so life altering, it's like being born all over again. Will you accept it? Will you receive the gift's power to change who you are and who you will be? Will you accept it or? Will you mistake its intention? The story is told of a, a harsh winter in the Appalachian Mountains, and the snow this particular year had piled deeper and deeper, and the mercury dropped, and the rivers froze, and people suffered, and the Red Cross had to be used to fly supplies in by helicopter. One crew had been working day after day to drop supplies, and they were on their way back to their base camp late in the afternoon when they saw a small cabin kind of almost buried in the snow, a little wisp of smoke coming out the chimney. The rescue team figured that the cabin's inhabitants was, were probably short on food or fuel or medicine. And because of all the trees around, they had to set down the helicopter about a mile away, and so they put on these huge packs of emergency gear and trudge through the snow, sometimes waist deep. Step by step, closer and closer, they got to the cabin until finally they pounded on the door. And a thin, gaunt woman answered. And one of the rescuers said, ma'am, we're from the Red Cross. And she looked at them and then kind of apologetically said, well, you know, Sonny, it, it's been a hard winter here. I just don't think that we could give a contribution to this year. <laughs> will you receive the gift, or will you mistake its intention? The wonderful Christmas gift has been given just for you, for each and every one of us. There are several of you here today whose lives are going to still feel empty <clears throat> Christmas morning after all the paper and the bows are piled in the trash bags. 
You will come to Christmas Eve worship because the emotion and the tradition and the archetypal symbols of the season all draw you to a place where there are candles and towers. Christmas just wouldn't be Christmas without silent night. That's probably true for all of us, isn't it? And I'm glad that you're spending the Advent Christmas season in worship. Because I want to tell you, and you need to hear, that there is a gift that has been prepared just for you. And you're going to love it. It's, it's not a new outfit, but it will change the way other people see you. It's not a cheese log, but it will feel, fill your hungry, those pangs of emptiness that you feel. It's not a set of Bluetooth headphones, but it will allow you to hear others in a different way and to tell them the true, honest thing that you want to say. It's not the newest New York Times bestseller, but this gift will teach you new things. It is the gift of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Handcrafted, one of a kind, antique and priceless, modern and fully equipped. The gift of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. He embodies God's vision of who you are and what God wants you to be. Did you get that? The gift of our Savior, Jesus Christ, embodies God's vision of who you are and who God wants you to be. It's God's Christmas gift. Just through you. Amen.